Today on What It's Like Discussion Episode Friday, I put a poll in the community tab about a week ago about brands that you guys thought were overrated. I am going to tell you my overrated companies. And this is going to be a very opinionated episode. And if you dig a brand that I don't like or I think is overrated, we can still be friends. I just don't know why these brands get hailed as being great. This is mainly a classic car channel, but today we're going to do something outside the box. Before getting into all of the brands that I feel are most overrated, I want to talk briefly about a car that I feel is most overrated that is on sale today. It's not really a car, but it's an SUV, and I am talking about the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. I reviewed one, and I will say they ride extremely well. They ride like an 88 Lincoln Town Car. It floats. It's very spacious. It has tons of tech. It's isolated from the outside. Like, literally, you could be going 120 miles an hour in this vehicle, and it feels like you're going 30. With the base price of the Wagoneer starting at $62,495 and the Grand Wagoneer at almost $100,000, you would think that you would be buying a premium product. I'm on the forms. I hear hundreds, if not thousands, of people having issues every single week. And it could be something stupid like... The infotainment system doesn't work, or the seats are ripped, or or it could be something huge like a cracked piston. There's been people on there saying that when they started their car, it ran extremely rough, and then it shut off, and they took it to the service station, and the service station told them that they had to replace a piston, which is on back order. It's a $100,000 product. You would think that it would be built with quality. There are people on there, no lie, that are saying, yep, I just took it on my first 1,000 mile journey, no problems whatsoever. You paid a hundred grand for a vehicle. You should have no problems with it for a very, very long time. I only bought one new vehicle ever, and it was a 2014 Hyundai Veloster R-Spec Turbo. That car was really hard car to find in 2014. They only made four different colors. I wanted that car because it was the alternative to a Volkswagen GTI, and I believed that they were faster than a GTI. And I proved my friend bought a 2014 GTI, and we raced, and I beat him. And he was shocked because the GTI is the best hatchback ever. And the reason I bring up the Veloster is because it has a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty that I paid 20 grand for the car for. I didn't have any, none, zero issues with that car. I mean, it was cursed. It got hit three times, and I ran into a deer, and, and then I got married, and we traded it for a Subaru Outback. But it had 54,000 miles on it, and I had zero problems for a fraction of the price of a Wagoneer. And I just can't wrap my mind around why somebody would pay that price to have nothing but issues. If you guys are looking at getting a Wagoneer, I'm, I'm just saying this because I see so many issues with them. Every single day I wake up, there's somebody else on the forum saying, hey, this happened to my Wagoneer. And they're saying that it's on back order and I'm gonna be without a vehicle for X amount of time. Don't put yourself in that situation of buying a really expensive car that is not reliable. Lincoln makes an SUV called the Aviator, and I absolutely think that they knocked it out of the park. Not only does it look great from the outside, but it looks great on the inside. The pile of shit and the Grand, I mean, the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, they only look good from the inside. They do not look good from the outside. They don't look special. It looks like a stretched Jeep Grand Cherokee does not look special. But if you look at the Aviator, look at these side by side, the Aviator looks freaking amazing. If the Aviator isn't big enough, they, Lincoln offers the Navigator. That thing is huge. It's same size as the Grand Wagoneer, maybe a little bit smaller, but it's, it's right up there. And they don't have the issues that the Grand Wagoneer and the Wagoneer have, to be frank. All right, so moving on to the list. I narrowed it down to top five, and they're not in any particular order except for the very last one, and these are all brands to do with today. We're not talking about the brands back in the day. We're talking about them right here in present day. Starting off this list with a bit of a bang, Maserati. 
Don't get me wrong, they made some really cool classic cars and they made the all new MC20, which looks really super sweet. But aside from that car, they haven't made a nice car since the 70s, maybe even 60s. We had one on consignment last year at the dealership that I worked at. And if you didn't drive it for a couple days, the battery would be flat. The battery is in the trunk. It is connected to, it almost looks like a motherboard of some sort. It's, it's weird. When you eventually do get the car started, the car thinks that you're stealing it. So it puts an electronic e-brake on and that can be a nightmare trying to get it off because sometimes it doesn't like to think that you're the actual owner just trying to move the car. They depreciate like a rock sitting in one. Did you ever sit in one? Let me tell you what that's like. It's like a bathtub driving experience where the sides are taller and the windows are small. It's like being in a new Camaro. There is more blind spots than Stevie Wonder. You can't see anything out the back. I'm honestly amazed that Maserati is still around. If you want a Maserati, let somebody else take the fall for you. Don't be the fall guy. Don't buy it first. Buy it on the used market. You'll get it for like half or a fraction of the cost. Okay, moving on to number two. Don't get mad, Jeep. This one might come as a shock to you, but I am honestly not a Jeep fan. I think they are overpriced. I think the 3.6 is a terrible engine. Anytime I hear somebody say, I got a Jeep, I instantly say, I hope that you bought the wench because you never know when you might need it. You could at least wench it from telephone to telephone pole or tree to tree. If you're in the plains, you're screwed. I guess if you have a large stick or stake, you can stake it in the ground and limp home that way. I know most people would just call AAA, but where's the fun in that? Just think of it this way. Jeep is a vehicle with a lot of compromises. It has a canvas top in a lot of cases. And sometimes you know, sometimes you take the top off and then it rains. Pennsylvania weather, we could have four seasons any given day. It's weird. You'd have to live here to understand that. But it could literally snow, be 70 degrees, rain, leaves can change all in one day. And you're just in your Jeep wobbling down the road because you can't go any faster than 45 because the death wobble happens past that. I just never got them. They, they're just overrated. Moving on. Okay, the last three on this list are all foreign, and I've never gotten into any of these. Land Rover. Base price, a couple years ago for a Land Rover was a hundred grand, or very close to it. But now, Land Rover offers a smaller offering, but still $57,000. You never hear, I bought a Land Rover for reliability. They're never in the same sentence. If you're buying this car to look good, just think of how cool you're going to look on the side of the road or sitting shotgun in a triple A wrecker with your Rover right behind you. I just never got these. And yeah, the depreciation, nothing except for the last entry depreciates like a Land Rover. You can literally lose a hundred grand in 10 years. And I've never been in the position to lose that kind of money in that time frame. Frankly, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. BMW. They say BMW is the ultimate driving machine. <laughs> right. We had one of these at the classic car dealership that I worked at last year. We sold it for $5,000. It was a convertible. I believe it was a 325i. And it was very eh. It was an automatic transmission car. There was a lot of plastic in that car from my, what I remember. It wasn't quality. It didn't drive. It didn't sound good. It wasn't, it wasn't anything to really write home about. I just don't see what's so great about these. But I will say that there are two types of driver that buy BMW. There's the one type of driver. They're either parked in the left-hand lane blocking traffic, not letting any traffic get around them because they're going half a mile per hour faster than the car that they're trying to overtake and they're just being a road clot or they are lane splitting, cutting everybody off just like a motorcycle. Those are those two drivers that BMW and I just never wanted to be associated with that. All right, before we get to our final entry, which I think is the most overrated car ever, few honorable mentions, Porsche, Volkswagen, Rolls-Royce, Ferrari. All right. At the top of our list 
is Mercedes-Benz. If you've been on this channel, you know that I am not a Sadies fan. They are overpriced. Nothing depreciates like an AMG Mercedes. My mom has a Mercedes-Benz, and I always ask her why. She had a Cadillac Escalade beforehand, and the Cadillac Escalade has tons more room than the SUV that she replaced it with. I get it, Mercedes makes bigger SUVs, but she paid the same amount for this SUV as she did for her Cadillac Escalade. And the funny thing is, is my brother owns the Cadillac Escalade now, and she sometimes uses the Escalade because it is bigger than her Mercedes. Her Mercedes fits four people and maybe a handbag for each four of those people to have with them, or two people and two suitcases. It's a tiny SUV, and every time she wants to get her oil changed, it costs her $500. I never got these. I never got why people bought them. I think that they're way overpriced for what they are, and the market also thinks that they're way overpriced for what they are because of depreciation. They wouldn't depreciate if the market thought they were worth all the money that everybody else thinks that they're worth. They're not cool cars. They're I, I don't get it. I reviewed one Mercedes for this channel. It was a 450 SL. And I always was very interested in that car because Tyler Hoover from Hoover's Garage said that that was his first car and he absolutely loved that car. That car is a pile of shit. For the money that that car was, that car was $35,000 in 1970, whatever. That equates out to be $131,000 now. You could buy a Cadillac and a Lincoln for that price and a garage to put them in. And both of those cars are better than the Mercedes. The Mercedes doesn't do anything good. It just sucks down gas and spends all your money. It's just a giant hole for you to shovel money into. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree with this list? Do you disagree with this list? Do you have any thoughts? ones to add i'm interested to see what you guys think in the comment section below now it's time for name that tune first person to get both the name of the band and song title will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section thank you all so much for coming out and watching this if you'd like to get in touch with me shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our facebook group that correlates with this youtube channel if you don't have Facebook and would still like to contact me, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo!